Hey everybody, I'm Lance Goyke, and today we're going to go through the quadruped right arm reach. Now, if you throw the like maximum version at yourself right away, you're probably not going to get it right. So I'm going to show you four different variations of this exercise to accomplish the same thing. So the origin of this is most people have really stiff left neck, left posterior shoulder, left ribs, and even left low back. And all of that stuff stems back to the normal asymmetries in the body. So if you look at somebody, they've got two arms, two legs, two eyes, two ears, two nose holes. It looks pretty symmetrical, but if you take all that away and you look at the organs that are like in the center of the body, things don't look very symmetrical. <laughs> You've got a colon that runs out the left side, but not on the right side. You've got a breathing muscle in the middle of your body that's huge on the right side and pretty small relatively on the left. You got a big liver on the right, small spleen on the left. There's just not a lot of balance here among other things, right? So what we're trying to do with this is people generally get stiff in predictable patterns because of this normal asymmetry in the body. What we're trying to do is just kind of keep that at bay. So with the quadruped right arm reach, there's going to be four progressions. We're going to start from the base level. If you can't feel it, you just stick through it. Sometimes it takes a few sets to get things to really settle down. First variation is actually in another video. Fix your pigeon stretch. It's a, a left posterior hip, hip capsule, left posterior hip capsule inhibition type of exercise. I made a whole video about that. If you need like a progression on loosening up stiff hips, check out up here in the upper right hand corner. For this, we're going to start hands and knees. We are going to hopefully, there's two ways we can do this. You can either elevate your left knee on some sort of pad or rolled up towel. That's kind of like the easiest way to do it. Uh, to fake that, you can also just slide, I'm gonna turn this way. You can slide the right knee outward and keep the hip or the weight down on the left knee. From behind, it looks like this, right? I'm just sliding this knee outward and my hips turn. If I slide my knee outward like this, I am not stretching the back of the left hip. This is the wrong way to do it. So if you can't get this motion, even just a slight little shift out with the right knee does a lot. If you can't get that, then you've got to just elevate the left knee and keep the knees parallel. So this is first variation, left posterior hip capsule inhibition on all fours. Uh, so we start here, we're going to slide into the hip shift. So I slid my right knee outward ever so slightly. Then you're going to pull the belly button up, making sure not to crunch while you do that. It's just the belly button comes up, hips kind of roll underneath you. And then from there, you're just going to keep the arms long. Try to keep 80% of the weight over here on the left knee. And you're just going to breathe. Nice, slow breaths in through the nose out through the mouth and as you exhale try to make your torso nice and long from tail to top of your head pause for five seconds after you exhale and breathe in we're going to repeat that for five breaths and do that. Okay, so this is not a follow along. That's just how you're gonna do progression number one. It's the quadruped left posterior hip capsule inhibition. But what we're doing it for is the torso. So the ribs on the left side tend to be really approximated. They tend to get close together and tight. So what we're trying to do with this hip shift is we're trying to loosen the left back. That's essentially what we're doing. Okay, so that's progression number one. Progression number two, is now we're gonna align the knees, but we're gonna shift the torso. So quadruped right arm reach. So same idea, if you had that pad under your left knee, now you're gonna take it out and you're gonna put it under your left hand. So your left hand is elevated. The way that I'm gonna fake that, if I don't wanna get a pad, is I'm gonna go on my fist. Very subtle movement, uh, but even just a little bit there will help you. So we talked about the asymmetry before, maybe it'll help if you understand what we're trying to do here. The breathing muscle, the thoracic diaphragm in the middle of the body, is smaller on the left side, tends to be flatter, and that goes with a flat back, tightness in the left back. So what we're trying to do is recreate a dome shape of the left 
uh, thoracic diaphragm. What we have to do is kind of rotate the ribs to the left, the lower ribs to the left to capture that position. And then we got to hang on to it. And then we got to learn how to breathe. And then we got to further inhibit the things that we do. And we do that as we work up through this progression. So what we're trying to do with this left, uh, left arm elevated, right arm reaching variation progression number two is we're trying to capture that left diaphragm. And we try to do that with the posterior hip capsule inhibition as well. Just with the people that I work with tend to have really stiff hips, so it's a good place to start. Uh, but to progress, we're gonna try this next one. So it's the same idea in execution. So we start on all fours, uh, left hand is elevated. We're gonna exhale, pull the belly button up slightly, stay nice and long. And then same thing with the breathing. Stay nice and long, top of the head to the tail. Pause and breathe in. One cue that I like to give people is try to breathe into your butt. If you feel stuff in your butt, pelvic floor area, moving around when you breathe in, then you're tends to be taking the air into the right spots, right? It's not that air is actually going into your butt. Common misconception. <sighs> okay, so we talked about positioning the left diaphragm. That's really important. Uh, we also have to close the left ribs in order to position that diaphragm. So one thing that you might have to do as we do progression number two, this is a really complicated problem. I have to go through all these steps because it's really easy to mess up. In general, less is more. Lots of pausing, very easy inhales on this one. Um, what you might need to do to get the feeling that we want is when you exhale, you might even need to crunch your shoulders very slightly to the left. Okay, not this much, but I'm showing you the direction that we're going. Just something like this. So now my right shoulder feels like it's a little further away from my body while my left shoulder, well, let's align my arms and legs here. Yep. So now my right shoulder feels like it's a little further away from my body than my left shoulder is, okay? And then we're just gonna try to do the same stuff. Execution is the same. It's just learning to breathe while you're holding yourself in this position that is pretty much totally foreign to you. <laughs> if you're anything like me at least. Okay, so that's progression number two. Progression number one, just a quick recap, was left posterior hip capsule inhibition. What we're trying to do there is shift the hips. They're turning, you're turning the pelvis to the left and arms are parallel, flat on the same plane. Progression number two was a left trunk rotation. So now the right arm is reaching further away from the body than the left arm. It helps rotate the torso to the left to help you capture those left abs and squeeze down the left ribs and position the left thoracic diaphragm. So that's progression number two. Now, progression number three and progression number four are just uh, more right arm reaching. So essentially, there's two things that keep this these ribs up. One is a lack of compression down, and then one is a lack of release of compression down on the other side. So I need the right side to open up if I'm gonna get this position. So our progression now, we can uh, put the hands on the same plane. Okay, I'm gonna lower both palms down to the ground. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a baby step forward with my right knee and a baby step forward, maybe a big baby step forward with my right hand. Now. We're emphasizing what we talked about, right? We're trying to open up the right side, close down the left side. It's, a, it's okay to kind of steer into the side bend that I was talking about. Just make sure your head doesn't come over. You want maybe nose about thumb line here. Nose directly over thumb or pointer finger, okay? And we're just hanging on here. Try to not put too much weight on that right arm, you're gonna feel, as we shift this way, you're gonna feel pressure on that right arm kind of pushing you over to the left, but that is okay. So same execution, we pull the belly button up and we breathe in through the nose, breathe out through the mouth. As we breathe out, let the left shoulder drop and let the left hip 
come towards it, okay? I don't wanna emphasize it too much, but let those motions happen. And then we pause, breath in. Now we still wanna be nice and long from tail to top ahead, but we need a little bit of side bend as we do that. And as you do this one, as you breathe in specifically, you should feel your right armpit expand. That is the goal. And as you exhale, you should feel a squeeze in the left armpit. So we're trying to get this left abs, left serratus anterior, that will help reshape the rib cage, which then calms down the neck and repositions the shoulder, gives it some stability, stuff like that. Okay. Uh, let me just show you the last progression then we'll talk through troubleshooting. So last one is, yeah, I mean, you're basically doing all the same stuff, but now we're gonna pick that right hand up and we're gonna reach it away. So all of my weight is on this left hand now. <sighs> same idea, belly button up, nice and long through the top of the head to the tail and breath in, breath out. <sighs> Get that squeeze in the left armpit, pause, breath in. Breath out. See if we can get a little bit more squeeze on the breath out now. And then a little bit more expansion on the breath in. This one you might run out of steam earlier than the other ones. Maybe you won't make it to five breaths and that is okay. Um, now, I have been doing YouTube for 10 years and I haven't made this video yet because it's such a pain. <laughs> Normally I have to watch you do it. Um, it's really easy to take too big of a breath and to lose the squeeze on the left shoulder. You need the squeeze on the left armpit area, this side bend. Notice how I'm sitting. I'm kind of side bent to the left here. You need to hang on to that if you're going to get anything out of this really <laughs> if you're going to open up the right side if you're going to keep the left side closed down if you're going to inhibit the pec that's overactive on the left side and if you're going to facilitate the serratus anterior on the left side that needs to be there to give you the shoulder stability and to loosen up the neck um so biggest thing that it looks like i'm just going to show you a very tiny version of this so let's say i'm here and i breathe in That was wrong. That was completely wrong. I'll get nothing out of that. See if you can see it again. So what's happening there is I'm letting my body go to the asymmetry that it's used to. When I breathe in, I close my right shoulder down. I feel a lot of pressure in this armpit area. And then when I breathe out, I'm not getting that reversal of things, okay? I need this to expand. And so every time I take the breath, if I'm doing it correctly, it's kind of like I'm just ratcheting every breath, maybe a little bit further. To an extent, you can go too far. So, you, I mean, stop when, you, when it feels uncomfortable, right? Uh, but that's one of the biggest things. If you're running into that and if you can't get it, just focus on the exhale. The exhale is easier to get. It's easier to do correctly. Um, and every exhale, just try to squeeze a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And even if you have to let it go on the inhale, that's fine because you're starting to mobilize stuff. And then the next progression is to say, okay, after I exhale, I'm just, I'm not going to lose that position. I'm going to breathe in, just try to hold it, whatever I got to do. And then when I breathe out again, I cinch down a little bit more and you start to get that ratcheting effect to give you progression over each breath. And I think I said this in the beginning, but sometimes you don't feel it on the first two sets because the right stuff is not inhibited. So if the left neck and the left back aren't shutting off, you might not feel the left armpit taking over. You might not feel the right armpit expanding because there's no movement there but you're starting the process. You're getting the inhibition of that left back, left posterior hip capsule even, and the left neck. And eventually, as you do a couple sets, you really start to, you get looser and you feel the right muscles turn on. So generally, we wanna feel squeeze in the left armpit, opening in the right armpit. Only other thing that I really wanna talk about 
is the side to side movement. So it's more about a slight twist and a subtle side bend rather than cranking everything. It's not about just turning the abs on as much as possible. So if I go front facing, if I exhale, uh, let's go right arm reach. See, I have a little bit of a twist already. If I don't reach long through my arm, I don't have a twist already. So I need both arms reaching long. That turns my torso to the left, helps me capture that left breathing muscle, that diaphragm. So I gotta do that and I gotta hang on to that. Now, second thing is if I do that by trying to do something like this, I'm just pulling my neck over to do the work. I'm not getting the inhibition that I need in my left low back. I'm using it to pull me over instead. So uh, both arms have to reach and then a slight little twist, slight little tilt, and this is it, okay? If you find your head is really going over the other way, generally we want the head to stay uh, pointed forward, looking forward uh, neutral, you might say. Um, so it's gonna kind of correct these other motions. In, in an ideal world, you have that torso bend, but the head stays level looking directly at the camera, right? It doesn't do something like this, because then I'm just using my neck to do the exercise. Okay, that's exhausting. Uh, and it will be exhausting when you do it. Normally, I feel uh, just just crazy. It's like <laughs> like I just meditated for 20 minutes. Um, super exhausted, but like clairvoyant. I don't I don't know. Hopefully, you feel that way. Hopefully, when you're breathing in, you're not letting that left shoulder rise up, and you're letting that right armpit open up. Not it's not this necessarily. It's just a little bit of tilt, a little bit of side bend. It's almost impossible to pantomime because. It's the breathing that does it. It's the breathing that drives that opening and that, that correction of imbalance. So hopefully that helps pick the appropriate progression and work on it for months. And I'm sure you'll see tons of progress.